Hello folks, welcome back, for I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom, and wow, what a wrestling weekend it was. I do apologize for technical difficulties. I have no control of the internet. That's pretty bad, but the last show from Saturday was um, Impact, Turning Point. Interesting show. Not one of the best. Nah, it was okay though. Um, we ha I have in my hands... The predictions made by Iho El Iho Del Hobo El Vagabundo says, I guess. Um, for the most part, he got five out of eight right. He missed three matches. I kind of filled in two for him. But yeah, I'll tell you what. Again, that 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 El Vagabundo. He's in the head of one Stephanie McMahon. With that being said, that's over. I do have to figure out the card. Although they just kind of announced it, although they haven't set things up yet. They haven't finalized the teams yet for SummerSlam. That'll be this Sunday. So um, the way this week goes, today's my regular show. Well, tomorrow morning sometime, maybe. Um, Tuesday night, it's definitely going to be Impact Wrestling. Wednesday is my review of AEW. Thursday is a prediction show. Ugh, I only yawn when I get on this. That's weird. Friday, SmackDown. Saturday, I have off. And then Sunday, it's SummerSlam. So that leads into... Oh, that's right. I don't know if they're going to have a Thanksgiving show for AEW. We'll see. But now, it's time to get to the Raw notes. Um, I have a whole bunch of thank yous, Susan Crumb. Thank you very much, and miss... You can, you can just be like Nikki Cross and take it all off. Again, Fife Dog. OMG. Pixie Carter, you, you get, you, you just made it back in the ring after that six count.
Tugboat 5000, you are a master of the air guitar. And then the bean, Frey Wyatt, you, sir, you can crawl out of here. So with all that being said again, thank you again if you'd like to get your own little video shout out remember if you get so many video shout outs you join the list like bum slicks little fettuccine 69 uh mojo's there i haven't had mojo in a while maybe it'll be mojo versus stan blaze i don't know i'll figure out something yeah um i haven't had jt in a while either eventually maybe oh i could do that i got some double battle roll oh that actually makes sense i'm gonna write that on the future card for the drunks giving or the international battle royal <laughs> international shuffle threat versus USA always underweight battle royal The always underweight champion. Then whoever wins that will face each other. Oh, I wonder if I should put. Um, I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to see. Me Mojo will be there. I'll figure something out. I'll figure that out later. It's not time to make a wrestling card. I can do that later. I can do my booking ish duties later. It's time to talk about some Monday Night Raw. Actually, a really good show. Um, we do see some changes. And they're punishing a bunch of people. Dana Brooke. You should be like Dana. Dana. And you should always wear your mask. For you never know. And especially when attending bare knuckle brawls. Or bare knuckle fights. I don't even know if they were allowed. So this is not prison. This is a civilized place. For I'm burned. Yes. And so we'll see what happens there. Um... Again, actually a pretty good show. Minus the first 20 minutes. The odd thing about Monday Night Raw, and I'm beginning to learn this more and more, is that they spend the first 20 minutes not talking about wrestling, but actually it's more like just looking at, staring at the door of wrestling. Or for the most part, they like talk. Um, it's good, because if I get home late from the gym, I don't miss much. I can take a shower and at least get dinner ready during that time. So I shouldn't be complaining. What am I doing complaining? But that's okay. Um, starts off as a recap between Roman 
Reigns and Drew from uh, Friday. Uh, of course, Drew gave his thanksgiving's coming up, so Drew gave his list of what he's thankful for. Um, Orton backstage, what he's thankful for. Then the Miz and Morrison intervene, and yeah. Again, Johnny Mundo has to come back. Every so often, there's shades of Johnny Mundo, but we need the Johnny Mundo from Lucha Underground. And then we get to our first match. It's Nia Jack, Shayna Baszler, and Lana taking on Asuka, Mandy Rose, and Dana Brooke. You, you just know Lana was going to go through the table. I have a very sneaking suspicion that somehow, some way, Lana's either going to be the first one eliminated, or she's, or she's going to win the whole thing. And the only reason I say that is because she is getting put through tables left and right. And taking it like a champ. She has to know something's up. So we'll see. Um, starts off, Dana goes right after Shayna Baszler. Bad idea, Dana Brooke. Uh, Shayna does that great backbreaker. So many different varieties of backbreaker now. It's really good to see that. At least they're kind of... WWE somewhat letting them open up wrestlers' repertoires, which is good. It makes them, instead of, again, it's so boring to see the five moves of Doom. You're like, oh, that's whatever. Match over. And you go to sleep. At least this way, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, then Naya and Shayna isolate Mandy Rose. They do not want Lana to tag in. Uh, Shayna. Um, on the outside, they isolate Mandy's shoulder, stick it on the steps, arm breaker onto that. Ding! Mandy Rose is out of here. Shayna then tries to do the same thing to Dan Brooks' arm in the ring. Doesn't work. Um, Asuka gets, gets tagged in again. She does a great shoulder tackle and a code breaker. Again, I like the fact that they're expanding things. 40-year-old Oscar's looking kind of hot, too. She, she, she's getting into that, that MILF range. Cougar. Yeah. I digress, though. Um, Lana gets the blind tag. Lana, all you had to do was stay on the outside and just watch. Um... Shayna literally had the match won when she had Dana and the uh, Carapina clutch the rear naked choke. However, Lana got locked in. Or uh, when Lana tagged in, tagged in, I forget if Asuka was in the Carapina clutch. But Dana only knows that Asuka put Lana in the Asuka lock. Lana tapped, uh, Lana tapped out. You know, two people were very upset. Yep, you know what happens then. Lana, you cost him the match. Lana, you go through the table. Psych! I don't even know anyone uses that word anymore. That was like a shock. That was a shock. I forgot all about the use of that word. And eventually, I do have to get a new chair because the pneumatics are dying. But that's okay. Maybe it's easier. So there we go. So you can see more. Of the door of wrestling. Right back there. Um, so yeah. This. Um, yeah. AJ then gives he's a team of pep talk. AJ actually seems like he's excited about Survivor Series. Seems like he wants to be the team captain. I like that. Um, Sheamus is the one though. There's always one rotten apple in the bunch. And this one tends to be Sheamus. Even Braun, for the most part, is going along as, as long as he doesn't get called any nicknames. See if he likes his nickname. Matt Riddell is too stoned to realize what's going on. Although he talks to AJ's bodyguard. <laughs> AJ learned that his bodyguard can speak English. That's not good, AJ. It was humorous. <laughs> and I do love AJ's delivery because it actually seemed genuine. He's like, you can talk English? I didn't know that. I have a thousand questions to ask you. That was, that was, inter AJ Styles makes it so entertaining. Um, and also, commercial break, then backstage, me, Yim, um, jumps Dana Brooke. Again, Dana, you shouldn't have video of you going to bare knuckle brawls, being in close contact 
Oh, if you want to be in close contact with me, I'm okay with that. Psst, Dana, I'm, I'm kind of single. But yeah, the whole video for no mask, um, high-fiving strange men at a bare-knuckle boxing event. Those are shady to begin with. Especially if it's something local out of our... Wait, it has to be something local out of Orlando. Dana Brooke. I think you and I... You know what? Forget what I said. We have to social distance ourselves. Yeah, that's a shady. So Amelia jumps her. Again, punishment. And then we have the Firefly... A tease of the Firefly Funhouse. There is a Ms. Um... Vinyl Pop Doll and Sister Abigail's wearing the Miz glasses. The rabbit just kind of kicks kicks the Vinyl Pop away. And Sister Abigail looks confused. This leads to the Firefly Funhouse. Miz is not so nice. Um, he's obviously commanded by a, by a reptilian overlord. Sweet. Um, Sister Abigail. Getting the Miz glasses. That was funny. He showed the training. It was kind of a homo homage to Bloodsport when Jean Claude Van Damme went did, uh, did his blindfold training. And then there was another line, and it might have been just a tossaway line from Big Trouble in Little China, but I never miss. That's from Big Trouble in Little China. Amazing. Cheesy 80s movie. So good though. Um, and then there was a spelling me for intelligence. How do you spell jackass? Oh, I spade. Isaiah got cash. Oh, wait, no, that's M I Z, Miz. Um, and then the rabbit, <laughs> again, stuck on a dartboard. He's like, yeah, I won't miss. Rambling rabbit dies. It's not a bullseye, it's a rabbit heart. Pre pretty funny stuff. Then we have the new. Then we have the hurt business versus the new day as the next match. Oh wait, um, I didn't. Yeah, I'll just edit that in. Yeah, the women's match. It was. It was actually pretty good. Um, it was a cheeseburger match. I can edit it in there somewhere. If I forgot to write it down, I'm like, oops, talk too much. Yep. So the, we got the hurt business taking on the new day. This was actually a really fun match. Uh, Cedric and Kofi start off. Really technical start. Um, catches catch Ken wrestling near collegiate level. I, mean, I saw the alligator roll. I haven't seen a pro wrestler do an alligator roll in a while. That's always good to see. Again, you throw in that collegiate wrestling. I have a little bit of a collegiate background. Collegiate wrestling background too. I really appreciate that stuff. Um, Kofi then did that twisting elbow. The New Day they double team. Kofi. He did the caveman. Uh, caveman Barbario Splash. I've actually never seen Kofi do that before. And the only person I saw that was Caveman Barbario from CMLL. And I'm probably getting his name wrong. From CMLL and, and like now AAA. So it was, I was shocked. I'm like, wait, I've seen that before. Cool. Again, when wrestlers open up their web repertoire, they make it a little bit different. It's, just, it's not a plug and play situation. It, it actually makes it feel like a dynamic situation. Makes it feel like an actual wrestling, like a competitive sports-based wrestling match. Whoa. What a concept. Uh, Shelton then got tagged in. with He was there with Woods. Again, Shelton's king of strong style. That was good. Um, some false finishes. Or, or, or Wood uh, attempted a... Uh, he fights out the chin, chin lock. And that was good to see. Um... Woods hits an insecurity. Kofi gets Kofi then gets a hot tag. Hits with a cross body. The tomahawk chop. Running jumping tom tomahawk jump. Except for he went for the boom drop, which was one move too much. Shell and Benjamin strong enough. He caught him and he hit a buckle bomb on him. And I thought the buckle bomb was a banned move. I guess only Seth Rollins, who's known to put wrestlers out. And again, the list of wrestlers that, that Seth Rollins has put on the shelf is Again, it kind of grows every so often. 
I mean, initially we had we had Finn Bat, we had Sting. Then it was Finn Balor, and then it was Becky Lynch. Oh, Becky Lynch was for other reasons, but yeah. <laughs> so Sheldon Benjamin caught him, buckle bombed him. They did the Doomsday Device on Kofi, and Kofi kicked out. That used to never happen with the Legion of Doom. But again, they're the Hurt Business, not the Legion of Doom. Kofi Kingston comes back. He does a, a Tornado DDT. Then Woods gets the hot tag. Now he's rested up. He starts to clean house. He did the, the amazing missile drop kick. Tag Kofi back in. He did a second missile drop kick. That was really good. Um, that actually had to be broken up. It wasn't just a straight kick out. It was on Cedric Alexander. Shelton Benjamin had to, had to break it up. Uh, Cedric... Cedric Alexander tried to do dives like three times, and he always seemed to miss. He would be close enough, but you can see he like just launched himself wide right. Listen, this isn't Florida State football. You want to be right down the middle, not wide right all the time. Well, sometimes in Florida State, he goes wide right, wide right, wide left. Vague football reference to when Florida State plays Miami, but. It always seems to be wide right or wide wide left. But yeah. Cedric, he tried to do it like three times. I'll give him props for it. Uh, Shelton, Shelton hit the angle slam. That was going to save uh, the Hurt Business. Then they double teamed. Followed up by a brain buster. That honestly should have been the end of the match. Except for, again, this time... Kofi. I think Kofi... Broke that up, so that was good to see. Shelton got low bridge. They did the daybreak on the on Cedric Alexander. He eats the pin. I'll tell you what, this was a fun match to watch. It really highlights again those four individuals. Uh, gives the New Day some momentum going into the SummerSlam. This actually was a surf and turf match. Then we have Seamus and Drew. Seamus found Drew's old ring gear, including the sword. And I'm like, that looks like a small sword for a claymore. Who knows? So that's good to see. Seamus she Sheamus has to get it together because in the next thing, uh, Team Raw versus Retribution. For most of the match, Team Raw kept it together. Matt Riddle was really good. It's Matt Riddle versus Casey Jones, Slapjack, whoever was in the hockey mask. Again, a really technical start. I, I, I like that so much. Um, let's see here. He, 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 again. Riddell's really good. Even Slapjacks. Very technical based. I do like that. But then eventually he gets tossed into the wrong corner. Um, then... Again, Sheamus and Braun start to fight and argue who's going to tag in. Keith Lee's like, hey, I'm happy. Keith Lee and Matt Riddle get along great. Keith Lee and actually she Braun get along pretty good on the team. Sheamus. Sheamus is that rotten apple on the team. And we'll see what happens a little bit later. Mustafa Ali. It's Mustafa Ali, not Mustafar Ali. Mustafar is a planet in Star Wars. Mustafa Ali is a pro wrestler. One day he'll get it straight. He just watched too much. Uh, he also isolates uh, Riddle in the corners. In the stomps. Casey Jones in. Yeah, uh, He gets caught into an ankle lock. However, he reversed that into a ripcord knee, which is actually like, really amazing. Then Lee and uh, Mace, who's a predator. Oh, that was such a big hoss fight. They just kind of run into each other. Uh, Keith Lee then just begins to like pounce everyone. Casey Jones got pounced. Um, he also used, um, I shouldn't call him Casey Jones, Slapjack as a weapon. You pick him up, powerbomb, whap. To, um, burn! No, um, oh, I forget what his name is now. <laughs> I'm so used to calling him by their villain names. Burn! Then into the Predator, into Mace. 
So that was that was good. It's always fun to watch another human being being utilized as a weapon. That's just funny. Um, then the Braun Express <laughs> went through. Um, Ali Sh- and then there was Ascension. Seamus wanted to get tagged in. Braun actually reached out first. Seamus was jealous. Riddle's like, hey, bro. So with that distraction, Ali shoved Riddle into Braun, who took out actually Keith Lee. And then Seamus got in and Seamus ate. Seamus got rolled up. He was he because he was actually the legal person then. Uh, Sheamus cost Team Raw the match. I'll tell you what, it was a fun match. AJ Styles said, listen, guys, we have to stick together. Team Raw for the men's division is going to win. They're just too big, too strong. Again, this was actually a really good cheeseburger match. Then Jeff Hardy's upset because they were post, post. Yeah, that would have been more than five minutes. But then uh, the next match we saw, The Miz versus Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt, of course, tries to do the gentleman thing, tries to handshake. Miz wasn't having any of that. Uh, he kicked He kicked away the hand. Bad idea, Miz. Uh, he started to beat up Bray Wyatt. Bray just kind of smiled, no sold stuff. And then John Morrison hit Bray with a cheap shot. Oh, Johnny Mundo, you're amazing. That looks so good. He jumped up. He just angered Bray some more. <sighs> back on the outside, Bray sends Miz into the steps. The Miz, when he got back in, he he had the Bray Wyatt days. Hit the double axe handle from the top. It's always good to see classic wrestling moves like that being used. Oh, I forgot to... Well, I'll mention, I'll mention it now. Before this, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss got into to a big fight. Nikki Cross is the best. Back to the wrestling match. Let's see here. My notes are... Then the Miz actually hit... Uh, Wyatt with a crossbody. That was a shock. Um, again, slid out of his sister Abigail. Did some... A nice neck breaker. That was good. It was... Yeah, some that... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Crossbody into... Oh, actually, Wyatt... Hit the crossbody. Tried to sister Abigail. Miss Miss slipped out of that. Reverse into a neck breaker. Um, Mundo tried to be a distraction again. And Alexa Bliss to this flying Luthes press, which John Morrison like caught her. They both went over the barricade. Um, eventually, Miz is utterly mortified. He eats the sister Abigail from Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt wins. Miz just, for the most part, looked confused the whole match. He didn't know what to make of anything. Um, On their way out, the Fiends Fiends music hits, and it's like a switch goes off whenever Kevin Dunn hits the Fiends music. So, yeah, again, this was actually another... It was a fun match. Probably the antics of, of of John Morrison and Alexa Bliss. And Alexa Bliss looks, like, way too cute and way too young, by the way. But that's a whole other issue. Um, So, again, that was a good, solid cheeseburger match. Um, Then we had some Drew and Orton promos. And because Mandy Rose, coronavirus, um, Dana Dana Brooke, for not self-isolating and not social distancing and not wearing masks, she's being punished. Um, they're out of the woman's team and they're being replaced with, with, with Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce. Yeah. My prediction is going to be that either Lana is the first one eliminated or Lana by some fluky means wins it all. That's, that's the only way this can end. Uh, Asuka, 40 year old, crazy Asuka is 40 year old cougar. Crazy Asuka's becoming best Asuka. She can speak in angry Japanese forever. It's just funny to listen to. Uh, Randy Orton cuts a promo. Another promo. Angel Garza 
it's talking about roses and, and how women are roses and he's thorns and uh, I don't. They if they're gonna do that angle, they kind of have to harken back the old school Rick Rude style, where it's not so much flowery talk, but for that he also needs to have people in the audience so he can pull some woman out, give her the drop down kiss. Although you can't do that with social distancing anymore, can you? I guess through a face mask? That's kind of weird, though. Or he starts hitting on Nikki Cross. And then I just, like, lose it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's okay. Things, things like that actually need the audience there. It just makes them so much better. Uh, and Shane and start to yell at each other. Because, yeah, we've injured everyone. Can't believe we're stuck with these two. And they kind of walk off. And then, of course, Lacey Evans, ooh, you nasty. And Peyton Roy, she got a tattoo, like, right under her, her one side boob. It was weird. Peyton Royce, I know she's doing the whole fitness model expose thing, but she's getting way too skinny. Who knows? But way, way too skinny. Then... In the main event, we have Drew McIntyre coming out in his original Scottish gear, carrying a sword, drives the sword through the stage like the, like the sword in the stone. That was really cool. Uh, Randy Orton comes out. He's the Viper anyway. Uh, they start off tied up, jockeying for a position. Jim Cornette's going to love this match. Actually, it's good to see a tie up every so often, especially between these two classically trained wrestlers. Just... It's just like pro, it's what pro wrestling is. Um, and you tie, um, even in amateur wrestling, you kind of tie off or at least you jockey for a position. Um, you don't go, they're not really supposed to go head to head because you can get tossed that way or, or ear to ear. Uh, again, they do the classic collar and elbow tie up. That's always good to see. Uh, they went for it again. <laughs> it was smart of, well, actually from there, Drew. Headlocked and shoulder got sent off the ropes. Hit Randy Orton with a big shoulder tackle. They go to lock up again, but no, Orton's too smart for that. Kicks him right in the gut. Um, Orton teases and the tie, the tie up and kicks to the gut. Takes it to Drew. Once Drew gets the upper hand, Orton's like, I'm done. Taking my belt, going home. But no, no, no. Adam Pierce comes out and says, No, this is now a no count out, no DQ match. However, that favors Orton, because then once that stipulation hit, again, so now we have an Extreme Rules match, no count out. Um, you do have to pin or submit your opponent in the ring, but you can use whatever, just go have at it. Orton then does that amazing cross neck breaker, and then he gets a chair. Drew starts to eat chair shots. For a while, you're like, oh wow, this really favors Randy Orton. Of course, Randy Orton set up a table. Orton has, he's old enough to know the rule of tables. You set up the table, you go through the table. Uh, they go to the desk, they fight on the desk. That was actually really good to see. Um, Drew missed, he missed like three claymores. And then eventually they go back into the ring. Orton hits a superplex, kicks out. Drew hit the future shock DDT. Orton kicks out, uh, rolls to the outside. Actually, she gets sent outside. Goes through the tail. That was a great bump. And Orton counters the Claymore into a power slam. They go back out to the ring, draping DDT from the desk to the outside. Orton throws Drew back into the ring, draping DDT there. And then, like a Claymore out of nowhere, stealing a page from the Viper's handbook. Drew McIntyre, new WWE champion. I'll say what, this was actually a really good match. This, folks was a surf and turf match. And again, that was a really good go-home episode of Raw. It actually didn't feel like a three-hour show. It, it kind of kept progressing. The seg besides the first 20 minutes, if you can get through the first 20 minutes, half hour of a Raw, it seems to be a little bit better. 
Again, as long as there's not a whole bunch of promos, the Firefly Funhouse makes it fun and entertaining. Again, the way to see the poor rambling rabbit die is, is kind of humorous now. Now, Lana going through tables that it's like, I want to see Lana. Oh, when does Lana go through the table? So that's cool to see. Um, again, the rest of this week, this will be going up tomorrow morning. It'll be processing tonight. Tomorrow night, it's going to be Impact Wrestling. We'll see what happens there. The uh, kind of go back from Turning Point. Uh, it, Wednesdays, the AEW Review. Thursdays, Predictions. I don't know who's going to do it. I'll figure that out that day. I might even do it. I haven't, I haven't done predictions myself in a while. Maybe because it's a big show, maybe I'll do it. Instead of um, Iho Del Hobo, El Vagabundo, uh, uh, Cuatro Dos, or Dr. Tom. Uh, Saturday, well, Friday, of course. Friday, SmackDown. Saturday, I'm off. Sunday, it's Survivor Series. So again, I'd like to thank all of you for watching again. If you're one of the people that I mentioned before, if you would like your own little shout-out video, you have one of a couple of ways. Find me over there on Discord. Where I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. You can find me easily there. Uh, like, comment, share, email, subscribe. Oh, that's the other way. Again, everyone have a good night.